come see how this 60 by 60 commissioned painting came together and learn about my new online course. All right, let's get started. Hello and welcome. This is Betty with Betty Frank's Art. Thank you so much for joining me here today. It's my first video for 2023. Hooray! I took a little time off in part of November and December and I am back at it. So this is a 60 by 60 by 1 and 3 8 inches on the side. And I know I've said this before, but um, I am actually doing a commission here. So I broke down and I said I wasn't going to do commissions, but I, hold on. Then I broke down and I decided to do one. So the reason I decided to do it was a number of different uh, factors. So one of them being that this person, Vicki, lives in the Bay Area, which is where I live. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to be creating something large like this, I don't have to worry about the shipping part of it. And the other reason was that she absolutely loves my art and understands, as she is an artist herself, understands the nature of creating abstract art is very intuitive, and she very much gave me freedom to create the way I wanted to create. Now, that being said, was I stressed out? Yes. Did I do that to myself? Absolutely, uh, because that's just the way I am. I got this thing about wanting to please people, and I want to, I wanted her to be 100% or even more than 100% happy with the piece. And so I put a lot of pressure on myself all the time. And that's why I really selectively choose when I want to do a commission. And this one, I loved what I created. Now, that entire journey of getting there was difficult, but I really learned a lot in that process about myself, about, about creating, about, um, taking care of the needs of others or, you know, wanting to do what, what they would like. Now, one thing I did allow is Vicki gave me some colors that she really wanted because, you know, if I'm going to create something custom for their home, I want it to fit in their home. I don't want them to all of a sudden have to, you know, change out everything to work around the painting. Um, you know, I don't have an issue with paintings, you know, matching the pillows or matching the couch or matching the the rug or or carpet or whatever, you know, to each his own. I'm not going to I'm not that judgmental about things like that. Uh, frankly, I think it looks better when a painting works in the room. And oftentimes a painting works in the room because the colors work in that room with what is in the room. So anyway, um, let's get back to what I'm doing. All right. So my early layers, as you know, I started off with some mark making. That's just my way of connecting to that canvas and getting something down because it's hard to look at a white substrate. So this huge canvas, 60 by 60, and, you know, just have this white blank canvas staring back at you. So I like to start with my mark making and it's just very freeing because I know it's going to be covered up. So I don't really care what it is. It's just a way of loosening up, connecting, getting my arms in the motion of movement. And um, it's one of my favorite parts of my process. One of my many favorite parts of my process. All right. Then from there, I like to go into adding a lot of black because I love to have black showing through at the very end. Now this black is actually in a jar where I've mixed a bunch of other colors into it. So it's a more complex black. It's not um, just a carbon black directly out of the jar, but rather I think I had thrown in some reds, some blues or greens into it, and it just kind of makes it a more deeper black. And then I came in with some warmer colors. So I like to divide up my palettes between warm and cool colors. And the reason I started with warm colors is because I knew I was going to be finishing this off with a cool palette. Although I do go back and forth a little bit, but for the most part, when I know I'm going to finish off with a cool palette, meaning like blues and greens or purples, then I tend to start with warmer colors, such as uh, the pinks, yellows, oranges, reds. 
And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm starting off with my warmer colors. Now yellow works with both my cool colors or my warm colors. So you'll see me bring out the yellows again later. Now I created a green because my black was still wet. And so it picked up that color and created this um, really nice green color. But for the most part, I really was trying to focus on going with a warm palette. But I have no patience, so I didn't wait for that black to dry. And I just accidentally swiped up some of it, especially where I created a whole bunch of drips. That is definitely not dry, but um, moving forward anyway. Now, my back is not hurting, <laughs> even though I look like an old lady the way I put my hand on my hip. Um, sometimes my back hurts, but for the most part, it doesn't. And someone had suggested to me to get risers for my table. And so I did that. And you could barely see next to that white little uh, stool there in the background in black. I do have, you can see part of a riser there. Um, it's four blocks that I purchased online. I think I, I ordered them through Amazon. And um, they're great because I was able to lift it up by, I think, five inches or maybe six inches, which means I, didn't, I don't, you know, hunch over my table as much as I used to. But in general, I do have a back problem. I have to do, um, let's see, each evening I do some exercises before I crawl into bed. And um, those help me with uh, my back and, and strengthening my, my core stomach muscles uh, so that my back is better supported. All right, so I'm just moving along here and just adding color here and there, everywhere. I see I haven't switched out my brush yet. I'd like to try to switch it out, but I can't specifically remember everything about this one because I created this one back in... October. I think it was October. Hmm. Now I'm trying to second guess. Uh, let's see. No, I think it was November because I ended up going back to Croatia in October and I got this done. Oh, that's right. I got it done um, right around the Thanksgiving holiday or right afterwards. So um, it was a little while ago. It feels like forever. I actually really only about a month and a half has gone by, but it seems like so long ago. So I will try to remember my thought process on, on most of this as much as possible. Watching it again helps me to, to recall some things. So here I'm trying to be really loose with my brush. Even though I am holding it in my dominant hand as opposed to my non-dominant hand, I'm holding the handle back, you know, as far as I can. And I'm just you know, scribbling here, basically with paint, I'm, I'm doing scribbles. And that's just to loosen up. And I like, you know, those marks that are left behind. They're going to get covered. A lot of them will get covered, but I, I really like that, that you can see some of those towards the end. All right, I've come back in. It's another day. And I like to start as if I'm starting all over again. I am starting with mark making again. And usually my mark making, and, and below this video, you'll see in the comments section um, a, a link, sorry, I'm hesitating there, a link to my favorite art supplies. Um, and if you can't find those, just leave me a message and I'm happy to, to send you a link directly. My plastic over there is, is kind of falling downward. Um, there were some issues in my studio. I don't know if you can see looking under my table. I don't have any baseboards there. Um, that's because we had a water line break on the fourth floor. Oh, excuse me, on the seventh floor. I'm on the fourth floor. So it came down several floors. And luckily, it didn't damage my painting at all. So when I came back into this painting, it was after being away for about a week while they were trying to dry out the, the space. and clean clean up the mess because all of my ceiling tiles came down to it um, right around the, um, the back side of my table there. So fortunately it didn't come down in areas that was uh, that was hard to clean up. Um, it came down in areas where it was fairly easy to clean up. So there was a crew that came in and did the cleanup. I had fans running 24-7 uh, for about a week and so it 
wasn't um, conducive for me to be in there trying to create and having all of those fans going and the noise going, although I probably would have liked the heat in there, but um, I chose to stay away for the week, week and a half, uh, so that everything dried out and I can get back into creating. So some of those scribbles you see there, I just grabbed one of my, I think it was golden tubes of paint. I've got a bunch of tubes of paint I'm still trying to get through. And one way for me to get rid of them, use them up, because the worst thing you can do is let paint dry in the tube and you end up throwing it away. I would rather waste it up on a canvas like this. And I use waste very lightly here because I'm, I really don't feel like I'm wasting. I am using it so that it creates more layers in my painting. And I just squeeze it directly out of the tube onto the canvas like that. Kind of a fun thing to do. All right, coming in with some cool colors now. So I've got that blue going on. I've got that tealish color going on. Now, a lot of the colors that I use all the time are part of what, what I call um, Betty's Bundle. And I will include a link down below for you that will take you to Betty's Bundle. It's uh, 15 of my most often used kind of a curated list um, or, or bundle of paints that I love to use. And you can purchase them in the four ounce size or the, um, what's next, 16 ounce or maybe less. Um, now I can't recall, quart. So it goes from four ounce to quart to pint. Um, so I've got them available in the four ounce, which is great for trying them out. I always try out new colors, getting the four ounce jar size, and then I upgrade to either a pint or a quart, which you can see on my, on my table over there. You can see I'm moving pretty darn quickly, right? Um, I did speed up this video quite a bit. If you want to slow it down, there's a circle or what they call a gear icon under the video, and you have options there to, uh, you can turn on subtitles, which I would recommend if you're going to slow down my video and turn off the sound. Um, but you can, like I said, you can turn on subtitles in your own language. Um, and you should see that option there depending on where you're located. I didn't want to have this run too slowly because otherwise we'd be here for a really, really long time. So again, if you prefer it slowed down, you know, you've got options to, to do that. But I think for the most part, you can see what I'm doing. So here I am kind of like keeping some things, covering things up, mostly covering, I would say but keeping some things, some elements from that first layer that I did. And there, I just turn my brush around and kind of scratch into that wet to create some texture. Here I've got gray directly out of the jar. And it's not often that I work directly out of the jar. On occasion, I will. But right there, I don't know if you saw that, but I just grabbed a little bit of the blue or the blue-green and mixed that into the gray. I much prefer my colors to be mixed. So here I've got a palette knife. Another way to add paint that is different than a brush stroke. So trying to add some variety here. That little stool comes in handy so I can see the very top. I do like to paint all the way around my edges so that, um, you know, I used to come in and just try to paint them black and I never liked the way that looked, mainly because I felt like I never did a really nice clean line of it. And so years ago I decided, okay, I'm just going to start painting all the way around and then I don't have to worry about making those edges look nice and straight. And I really like when the painting continues around the edges, around the corners, wraps around the sides, because when you're looking at it from a different angle, it's like the painting is just continuing. It doesn't abruptly stop at that, you know, that top layer that you're looking at. 
I guess it adds more dimension, just like I love adding dimension to my painting. And then some folks like to add a floating frame. And oftentimes, and even with this one, I said, you know, live with it without a floating frame, see how it feels. And then you can later always add a floating frame. I think floating frames just adds that one more level of, of making it feel a bit more finished, especially depending on where you're going to put it. If you're going to put it in a room that is a bit more um, upscale, elegant, um, you know, I think that adding a floating frame will pull that together and make it more part of that room. So we've got lots of greens and blues going on. There's kind of a rust color. She requested a rusty color. Had a really hard time trying to incorporate that one in because really didn't, um, didn't play well with the other colors. But I did manage to, to keep some of that at the very end. Uh, gold was another one she wanted me to add in here. I do have a gold paint from Nova. It's not part of Betty's bundle, but it, it's on their list of colors. And that one was hard to, to include as well. I wasn't quite getting the gold that I was trying to envision. So it was a bit of a challenge. As with all of my paintings, I'm, I'm focused, as I'm creating at this stage, I'm focused on the elements of design. Not so much the, it is part of the composition, but I like to think of them as the elements because when you're creating an abstract piece like this, there isn't always an obvious focal point, but there are elements within here that pull that composition together. So some of those elements being the larger shapes, the smaller shapes, the values, um, the lines versus you know hard edges versus soft edges, uh, things of that nature. And so I focus on those as I continue through the piece and trying to remember to bring in all of those different elements. One thing that I was working on towards the end of the year and probably why I didn't have time to uh, create videos like this is I have uh, finally put together an online course and super excited about it. I am doing the final uh, parts of it, which means I am doing a lot of the marketing of it right now because I already created the course itself and I did all the videos for it and pieced it all together. So that part's done and I'm just finishing up some of the marketing around it. I also had some folks take the course uh, so that they can provide me with some feedback and a review of the course. And I have to tell you, I'm just... Um, so thrilled because the feedback I'm getting, not only very detailed, but just genuinely, they, they really loved the course and they really spelled out what it was that they loved about my course that helped them better understand abstract art and creating art and also the elements of design. There is a bonus in there that I include on creating a piece just in black and white, which is focused on values. And so um, I've just been thrilled because the reviews have been coming in this week and I'm super excited that, um, and it's funny because earlier, like on New Year's Day and, and on Monday, the 2nd of January, I was, I just had this imposter syndrome creeping in on me about, oh, about the course, you know, like Betty, you know, who are you to be putting out this course? And, you know, is it even any good? Is anybody going to even like it? Um, at this point, the reviews had not come in yet. And so I was really starting to have that self-doubt creep in about my ability to create a, an online course, my ability to teach you anything and, uh, and to show you, you know, how to create art. And so I'm feeling a bit better right now because of these reviews that have come in so far. And um, I'm just really, I'm just more excited now. Um, that imposter syndrome has kind of really kind of dissipated. It's not entirely gone. I don't think it ever really is, but 
I'm feeling much more comfortable and confident and, and just excited, super excited about launching my new online course. So um, if you want information about that, it is going out to the folks on my email list and they will receive the notification when it's ready to go. And then also they'll receive a discount code. So um, I'm going to do a pre-launch discount code for everyone. And if you'd like to receive that and get a discount on the course, then just um, below the video, you'll see a link for signing up for my email list. And again, if you can't find that, no worries. Just leave me a comment below. I'm happy to send that over to you. I am planning to launch it within probably a week of you of this um course, excuse me, this video launching on YouTube. So um, it's coming up pretty, pretty quickly. So like mid-January is when I'm planning to release the online course. It's my first full online course, and that's why I'm really excited. And that's probably why I, I was having a lot of imposter syndrome, because I haven't done this to the degree that I have. I've had some online courses, but they were much shorter. And this one is much longer. I mean, it's over five hours of content, of video content. So it's much more thoroughly planned out. And I cover so much more um, in detail, you know, in real time, nothing is sped up. It's all in real time. All right, so moving quite um, quite along on this one, it's slowly starting to come together. There were some frustrations that I had with this one. Oh, and sorry, it, it changed a tiny bit because I was sitting and looking at it and then I made some changes and I forgot to turn my video back on for those few changes that I did. Uh, but they were, they were not major changes, just a few things. So I've come back in and continue through. And it's always nice when I'm working this large to be able to pause a bit and look at it and figure out what I'm liking and what I'm not liking about it. So I'm looking at my phone there and I believe I was looking at a photo of it and also the colors that Vicki wanted. And I think they're actually on a post-it right behind my head. You can't see it right now, but I think I've got them posted up there too. So there's still a lot to be done here. And I'm trying to be careful not to just come in and just broadly take a brush and cover areas that I'm not happy with, because that's it's not the way I like to create art. I like to work with a smaller brush. So the one that I'm holding in my hand that I just dunked in water, I think that's like a, I want to say like a 12 or a 14 size brush. So it's not like a, you know, four inch across big old brush. It's a smaller brush. And I realize I'm working on a really large canvas and you would think that I would need a really big brush, but that's not the case because I really don't want to cover everything up. As you can see where I just added a lighter value there, there are bits and pieces that are that you can see that were behind it. And that's one of the things that I love when I'm creating is creating that depth. Now, I've added a lot of lighter value up into this corner, but all I did was I covered up all that yellow. So it's still, that whole section is still a really broad section of just one color. And I do end up addressing that a little bit later because it really starts to bother me. See, so if you look at, as I'm tripping, oh, <laughs> and I knocked over, <laughs> I think I broke it a little bit, but it was still working. So if you look at the rest of my piece, more like let's look at the right side or the middle um, lower section, there's a lot of interesting things going on there, right? But if you're looking at my upper left-hand corner, it's just a big field of what? What is that? I don't even know what that is. It's just a whole lot of one color and nothing interesting going on. So I end up having to address that. And the way I do that is I break that down into smaller fields of color. So, so adding color in, in smaller sections. And it becomes a little bit of a challenge because now I've already done the rest of the piece, right? 
I've got all these great colors. If you look at the lower section, loving the lower section. But now the upper section definitely needs work. And now I've got to figure out, because I mix my colors as I go, I got to figure out how am I going to get colors up in this section that are going to work with the rest of the piece when I don't have that color anywhere else or that specific color anywhere else. So one thing that I do, like that green, I kind of made some additional marks with it over towards the right so that it was, you know, wasn't just in one place. So all that to say is I'm continuing to work the entire piece as I'm trying to address that upper corner. And really, the whole piece is not done yet. There is more work to do. But if I was to, you know, stop right now, I would have to say, you know, I'm loving like three quarters of the way up. From there all the way down, I'm okay with. It's that whole upper area that is giving me some trouble. And this isn't, you know, uncommon for me to, to struggle this way. Each painting is going to be different and they don't all flow. You know, I would say the majority of them don't flow. Like, for example, I just created a 12 by 12. And yes, again, I did a commission, but this one was Betty pretty much, you know, do what you want. Um, I love all your work. So, and it, it was a smaller piece. And so I have these, you know, like those blue um, circles, uh, elongated, those are, those represent my love for flowers. And so I did the same kind of similar to that on this 12 by 12, but I did it kind of on the lower left-hand side. I think there are there are probably like eight layers on them because I couldn't get the color right to work with the rest of the piece. And I kept trying and I kept trying and I, I would take a picture and I would change the color on my phone to see, it, you know, what color would work. And then I would try that. And it's like, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. And then finally, I, I finally got the right color in there and it finally worked. So, and that is a video that I will have available um, probably in a, in a few weeks. So. All I'm simply saying is that we're going to struggle through these. We're going to try to make it work. And in order to make it work, you just got to keep going. You got to keep trying different colors, layering it up. If you don't like a color, you know, you can either remove it if, it, if the paint hasn't dried. And I've been known to just spray down a whole area and, and wash it away, wipe it away, or let it dry and just go over it with another color. Here I'm putting lotion on my hands because I think I forgot to do it earlier. And lotion just helps remove that paint later. It just comes off so much easier. And any lotion will work. That uh, particular one that I have is from the dollar store. All right, I'm back on my phone. And I'm not really sure what I'm looking at over there. I must have done something on my phone. All right, moving on. To, all right, so I'm squeezing out paint, and I think this is the golden paint that I had. All right, so I'm going to try to come in with some rust color that she was requesting. And just bits and pieces of it, because certainly I'm not going to add a ton of it, uh, because it's not going to work with the rest of it. But I figured if I can just come in with a little bit, it would, you know, just add a touch of it. I usually don't show the progress or, or the, a photo of the artwork until I'm like 95% done, where I'm feeling pretty good about where it's at and want to get some feedback from the client. You know, do they like the colors? Do they want a little bit of something different? You know, allowing them to have um, a little bit of input towards the very end. And I certainly did that in this case, uh, but not yet. Um, it's a bit later that I sent over a photo. And I'll be showing that to you when we get there. Standing back, you can't see me, but I'm way back there trying to figure out what to do. 
that upper left still needs to be addressed and really the upper right as well. It's, it's just a big field of one color and nothing much interesting happening there. With the style of painting that I do, what I really love about it is when I'm especially working this large is just letting it dry, coming back to it another day, going at it again. And I just love even just looking at it here now, just the depth of it, the the layers of colors that are happening, the bits and pieces that are showing through. I'm, I'm just I love that. That's the kind of thing that just lights me up. Here I'm making some longer marks, all representing my love for flowers, fields of flowers, nature. The teal colors that you see over on the left, those are my love for stepping stones. Those are a bit more narrow than I normally do, but again, it's abstracted, right? It's not going to be exactly what we see but it more of a representation. So I didn't like the, the rust color, and so now I'm covering it up. But I do come back and try to add it in again. It, it's one of those you know dances. I kept going back and forth with it, trying to figure out how to get it to work. So at this point, we are, uh, I'd say about three, three fourths of the way through. And a lot of this now is, is fine tuning it. Trying to find a way to make it all work together. I do want to say thank you so much for being here. If you're still hanging out with me, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know a lot of my videos are pretty long and that's because I'm working on larger pieces for the most part and it takes a while to get through those. So I am so appreciative of you being here and what would really help me a lot is if you would give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying what, what I am showing you today what I'm talking about today. And if you haven't had a chance, if you can subscribe to my channel as well, that means a lot to me. And then hit that bell to be notified of future videos. We're in 2023 now, it's early January, and I do plan to continue providing videos on a regular basis. All right, here is the artwork in her room. And I superimposed it onto her wall for her so that she can see what it looks like. Okay, so came back with, there was a couple of things she wanted. She wanted a bit more of the blues and teals, if I recall correctly. Um, so I'm going to try to incorporate that in. And then from there, I wasn't 100%, you know, feeling done with it. Like I said before, I try to get to like the 95% point and then send it over. That also gives me a chance to kind of, you know, think about it too, look at it from a distance. Um, I like looking at it in that room view. It's just a different perspective than, than looking at it live, you know, in my own studio where the wall is kind of messy. There's a lot of noise going on around, around it. So I like to, you know, photograph it and just look at it on my phone. And like I said, throw it up on a wall as well. But the the customers, the client's wall. So I was kind of, I do recall that I was excited about trying to, to pull this together because I had some ideas of how I was going to do that. And I did like that she wanted some more of the teals and blues. And so I was going to bring that in. Now here I'm trying to come in with some darker values. I felt like that was missing and, oh, that's what it was. Okay. She wanted greens, the dark green, the hunter green. Let me tell you, that really was.
wasn't working with my overall painting. And here I'm covering up those greens that I just put down, but just letting a tiny bit of it show. Here I'm going to cover it up also. And so this is an example of coming in with what I want to say a third color. Okay, it's, it's just simply a color that I really wasn't using a lot of before. And now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to incorporate that into this painting. Truly a challenge, right? Um, you know, I could have said, nope, that's just simply not going to work. But I didn't know if it was going to work or not. I said, okay, you know, let me see what I can do. And so... I like to experiment and try and figure things out. And here I'm trying to figure out how in the world to get this dark hunter green color into the painting. And this painting, as you can see, it is mostly made up of blues and teals and, and lighter blues, darker blues, and some greens, but certainly not that dark hunter green color. I'm tapping over there, which is what I do when I don't know what to do or where I should go. I said that I knew what I wanted to do here, but yet I didn't really know. I just was winging it and trying to figure it out. So I'm adding some green here, not as dark as the one down below. And see how I'm starting to close up that, that big area up in that left-hand corner. Well, I was trying to. Now I'm coming in with a really light value. I do like the lighter value. I, I feel like it's making this painting pop a bit more now. I still don't like that upper left corner. But I do like where I put the lighter values down on the right, or, right side. And now up in this area, which isn't quite so white, I think I must have added a little bit of color to that one. Sometimes if I just use pure white, like, like titanium white straight out of the jar, it's just a bit too jarring, too bright, too, yeah. So I, I like to often just add just a tiny bit of color to it. All right, back to addressing that upper left, trying to figure out. And then I used whatever was on my brush to add somewhere else. And I will do that often if I'm towards the end and I'm trying to add additional colors. I will, like I mentioned before, add those colors somewhere else. When I came back and I worked on this like I am now, when I was done with this session, I was so, so happy with the piece. It just, there was, it just went to a whole new level. And I was so happy about that. I do tackle that, that dark green that's on the lower left. So don't panic. I will get rid of it. The majority of it. <laughs> I love when I get messages, um, comments, and I'm not sure where the person is when they're watching my video, but they'll come in and say, oh, I, I really don't like that dark area that you have. And, <laughs> and I just love, I love reading those kinds of comments because you're very involved in, in what I'm doing and um, commenting about it. And I do love those comments. So Feel free to comment below. Um, always happy to hear from you guys. I will find myself just going over areas over and over again. Sometimes I do that because I want to add a different value in that area or I just don't know what else to do. And so I'm just trying to keep going. I'm not one to really, you know, sit and contemplate, you know, like make one mark or, or, you know, put down paint in one area and then sit and contemplate it for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. I'm just not that kind of painter at all. Um, 
I will make quick decisions like right there. I just covered over that lighter area. And I just like to keep going and, and keep trying to figure it out. So maybe that's, you know, part of my being impatient. I'm not one to sit and observe for too long. There's that green again, trying to make it work. How many times did I go over those particular lines? How many more times will I? Right. I don't have the final piece in front of me as I am talking with you. Maybe I can look it up on my phone, but I'm pretty sure I get rid of that dark green area. Now I'm, now I'm like second guessing myself if I had done that or not. I'm going to my Instagram account while I'm chatting with you guys. So I know I've got it on here. There it is. All right. No, you know what? I actually kept that dark green area. How did I make that work? That's interesting. Hmm. I didn't realize that I kept it. Well, let's see how this all comes together. Although I, it looks like I lightened it a tiny bit. It doesn't seem quite as dark as it was. It's so funny. I am like being so negative about that dark area that I created, only to now realize that, well, it's still there in the final piece. I'm still trying to find it on my phone. I found a, a reel of it, a reel on um, Instagram, and it went too fast and I couldn't really, really see it. So I am looking through all my photos on my phone, which if you're like me, you probably take way too many photos and there's a lot to go through. So speaking of reels on Instagram, so the past few days or a week, I want to say, I have not been doing as many reels. I've been cutting back on reels and the main reason for that is, you know, I know that more people will see my reel because Instagram will serve it up to more people, but I have just been getting so frustrated with trying to be a video content creator as opposed to being an artist and doing the stuff that I love to do. And so I decided, well, forget it. I'm just going to go back to posting my photos of my artwork as opposed to trying to create these fancy schmancy reels of my artwork that go by too fast and you can't really appreciate the details in it. And so I'm much happier now. <laughs> I'm much happier just posting a photo of the artwork and talking about the photo as opposed to spending half hour to an hour trying to come up with a cute real idea that, um, that will be seen by more people. So, okay, there we go. So now it's in her room again. I sent this over to her and she approved it. She loved it. I loved it. Um, the close up video that you're going to see now that I slowed down. And I think you're going to see much more of the detail happening and the layers happening. And so, she was super happy with it. And like I said, I was really pleased that I went back and not just tried to do those colors that she wanted, but I continued to work on the piece overall and was so much happier with the end result because of that. Now, one thing I didn't capture on video, um, and I don't recall why, but um, I didn't capture me putting my final mark making on here, one of my cameras ended up dying and it's sitting here on my desk right now. I got to figure out if it's truly completely dead or what's going on with it. But fortunately I have two video cameras that I use for recording. So I was able to get my other one um, to, to do this recording and to finish the videotaping overall. So I was a bit frustrated with that, but you know, my final mark making a lot of times you can't even see what I'm doing because the canvas is so large and I'm, the camera is so far away to capture the whole thing. So if you want to see my final mark making, you know, up close, 
I've got other videos. Um, look for my, if you go to my homepage and just go to uh, scroll down and you'll see small art. And those are the ones where I'm working smaller and you can, it's much more closer. You can see how I do my final mark making. Whoa, I really zoomed in there. Oh, there's my signature. I guess I was trying to do that. You can see some drips back there. Those are some things that you can't really see from far away. And that's one thing I love is being able to see things from a distance, but then also when you come up close, really seeing a lot of that detail. All right, I'm going to give you a view of my studio. I've been forgetting to do this on my other videos, so I try to remember. Love those palm trees out there. I'm in downtown San Jose. So there's my main table that I work on. This is a rolling table. I love being able to roll that around. There's a piece of art that I had just varnished. All right, so stuff is up on my tables because um, of that water leak that I had. So I, I haven't quite organized my room. My, my chair is in the wrong place. You know, things haven't been put away. That corner there is kind of more storage. Coming around here, I love those two large pieces. I'm picking them up this, uh, this week. I got um, custom uh, frames made for those or uh, stretchers and had them stretched and can't wait to see what they look like. I created those when I was in Santa Fe attending a workshop, not teaching, but attending one with um, Audrey Phillips um, at Santa Fe Artist Getaway, which I'll be teaching there again this year. So super excited about that. Okay, here's the final piece. Love, love, love it. I know it's harder to see in pictures. Here it is. She changed out the pillows. So those other burgundy ones just weren't really working. So she did make a few um, adjustments there, and I love the way it looks. Thank you again for sticking around till the end. You can watch more videos here. Please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in a future video. Wishing you a super fabulous and creative day. Take care.